there folks and welcome back to the channel and another one of these uh, wonderful head-to-heads. Today we are taking a look at a micro brand which is Radcliffe Watches from Oxford right here in the UK and this one here is uh, from Tissot and it is the V8 Swissmatic. Kind of comparable in prices and we're going to have a look and we're going to score them, um, and I'm going to score them as a, as I did on the last one because that seemed to work quite well, which is like a football match. So each round will have a total of three points available, three points for a win, one for a draw, and a zero if they lose the round. Um, I, I've got the score sheet off to one side, so if you want to take a note of this, grab yourself a pen and a piece of paper and take your own scores and even put your own scores because it'd be interesting to know what you think. Um, and these are my opinions, um, so don't get too upset if you disagree with me, just let me know in the comments. So anyway, here we go. We will begin with the movement and uh, the movement in the Tissot is, as I said, is the uh, Swissmatic, um, 21,600 vibrations per hour, so four ticks a second, uh, sorry, six ticks a second. Um, and uh, it has a power reserve of uh, roughly 72 hours. It has hand winding, but does not have hacking. The Radcliffe has the good old Seiko NH36A, 21,600 vibrations per hour, and uh, a power reserve of roughly 41 hours. Um, now, the uh, the Swissmatic uh, is uh, non-serviceable, uh, whereas the uh, NH36 is serviceable. Um, not that you'd particularly want to, because, you know, they're kind of cheap enough, you could just swap them out. But the whole idea with... Uh, these um, Swissmatic, I think, was uh, so you could have a, a Swiss-made automatic watch with basically a disposable movement in it. So when the movement, or if the movement ever packs up, you just have to swap the whole thing out. Um, this is a kind of a two-part um, uh, round, but for this part, um, I have scored them equally. They both get one point, so the Radcliffe scores one, and the Tissot scores one. And then we will move on to what I am calling trial by time grapher. And coming up now is some footage. And um, yeah, that kind of tells its own story, doesn't it? <laughs> the Radcliffe plus 11 seconds per day, 0.6 milliseconds B error. The uh, Swissmatic plus two seconds per day, 2.6 milliseconds of beat error, but it is snowing really badly. So, uh, yeah, I've given that one to the Radcliffe. So it's three to the Radcliffe and no points to the Tissot on this occasion. Dial and crystal. Um, Tissot, sapphire crystal on the front and uh, mineral crystal on the back for its exhibition case back. Uh, the dial, uh, it's, um, it's just kind of plain white. There is a slight texture to it. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it is just very, very plain. And the Radcliffe, uh, we have sapphire crystal on the front, which is uh, double domed. And we have mineral crystal on the back. We also have a sapphire insert on that uh, on that bezel um, and the dial I mean do I really need to say any more about that dial just look at it so uh, yeah no prizes for guessing who won that round uh, that is a clear three points to the Radcliffe and none for the uh, for the Tissot legibility um, don't have a problem with leather legibility with either of these um, they're uh, you know they're in kind of night or day or low light situations they're both reasonably well when it comes to dark that's a different matter we will get to that shortly uh, but as you can see you know you've got those on the Tissot you've got the uh, silver um, indices against the white white dial background and uh, the uh, Radcliffe against that uh, Tiffany blue with the the silver edged and uh, loom filled indices so no problems with legibility so they both score a, a good one point for that 
Now then, as I mentioned a moment ago, the loom. Here comes the loom shot. And, uh, yeah, do I actually need to say anything? Winner! Um, so, yeah, the, 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 the Radcliffe, they both got uh, BGW9. On the Tissot, I really don't understand why they don't put a loom pip um, either above or below or a little loom stripe down the indices because just on the hands... Yeah, as long as you know the orientation, it's not too bad. But the, the, the hands and the loom in the hands, the shaping is very similar. So, yeah, if you didn't know the orientation, if you watch, it's going to be difficult to see. Do they last all night? They both last around about the same sort of time. They will both do a couple of hours. The hands on the Radcliffe do hang in just a little bit longer. So uh, the Radcliffe takes the three points for the loom and zero for the Tissot. Um, now then, the crown and ease of use. Uh, on the Radcliffe we've got plenty of knurling on there and uh, it is very easy to get to because there's no crown guards. Uh, it is signed uh, and it's yep, yeah, very easy to operate. No trouble with that whatsoever. Uh, the Tissot, um, as long as you understand these, you're okay because they wind counterclockwise. If you're using the hand winding function, you turn the uh, the crown towards you, not away. Uh, and it is a nice big chunky crown with uh, decent decent knurling on there. It's also signed. So from an ease of use point of view and getting to the crown and manipulating your time and your date, etc. Absolutely fine. No problems at all. So they both score one point. Fit and finish. Uh, the Radcliffe is, uh, for a micro brand, is one of the nicest that I've seen. I've seen a few, and uh, they're usually done pretty well, very, very high standard. Um, nice touch on this with the drilled lugs, which is pretty cool to have. And uh, the, uh, the brushing is done nicely. You've got a chamfered edge just running down there, or actually runs the length of the case. And uh, then back up to uh, brushing again. The brushing matches the bracelet pretty well. So yeah, it's uh, overall not too bad at all. Uh, this is the prototype, I should say, and uh, I will kind of give it a little bit of a, a knock, even though it's a prototype. Uh, the because uh, I'm sure some of you have noticed the um, bezel insert is just ever so slightly off. Um, the Tissot, on the other hand, um, obviously, I mean, I have seen where the where the bezel has been misaligned, even though it. It's a non-rotating one. I have seen people have trouble with that, but I'm going to give it a little bit of an uh, because the date doesn't quite line up in the window. And as that's framed, that really does kind of stand out. Um, so fit and finish, I, I'm actually going to go evens on that. So they both score one point. Now then, brand. Um, it doesn't matter how good a micro brand is. I guess, you know, there are those that prefer... Yeah, the big hitters, and uh, yeah, it doesn't get much bigger than the Swatch Group, and uh, and Tissot. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, I think that, that that Tissot is 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 gonna take take the win for that round. Uh, although Radcliffe have got some uh, some really really nice watches, and I really do strongly suggest heading over to their website and going and have a look at what they've got to offer. If you were looking for a micro brand watch. Uh, you know, from a UK company, this is fantastic, and so are their others. Um, so uh, I, the Radcliffe loses that round, so takes zero points, whereas the Tissot takes three. Now, as far as value goes, I think that they both offer good value for different reasons. Uh, they both kind of go anywhere, do anything. Watches um, the. I guess the Tissot is, is just slightly more expensive, uh, but you are getting, if you like, your Swiss Swiss made watch. The bracelet is actually really well done on this, uh, and yeah, really nice solid links. Um, it does have a butterfly clasp, which isn't everybody's favourite, I guess. Um, but uh, you know, it, I mean, it is a heavy watch. The other thing with this is it's big. Um, certainly compared to the Radcliffe, I think what we got 44 to 41. Um, so you know, it's uh, but yeah, fit and finish and value and all the rest of it. I am going to go equal. So for for the you know, the value per pound, dollar, yen, euro spent, 
uh, one point each, which brings us to the totals. And if you've been keeping track, you know we have a clear winner. Even if you haven't, you probably know that we have a clear winner. <laughs> so, my scoring. Here we go. We have for the Radcliffe, which is this column here. Here we go. Radcliffe, the prototype of the signature. It gets 14 points. And for the Tissot V8 Swissmatic, and we come down here and they get eight points. So, you know, only just over halfway. Um, I was quite surprised myself. I actually kind of, I had to really think about this and how I'd scored it. Um, yeah, but uh, there we go. That's my thoughts. A bit of a David versus Goliath. And we have an absolute outright winner, uh, which is... And I think, rightly, the, the Radcliffe signature against the Tissot V8. Um, would I recommend either watch or both watch? Yes, possibly for different reasons. This is definitely going to be for, for the bigger guy. This is more of an all-rounder. And I think just kind of offers, uh, offers a bit more um, in a similar price bracket. But let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, as usual, have I been too harsh? Have I been too critical on some points on one or the other? Um, yeah, let me know. Comment down below. Uh, if you like this kind of content, please give this video a thumbs up. And uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so, done so already and hit that notification bell so you get notified when I upload any more content. But that's all I've got for you for today. I hope you've enjoyed this match. And... Uh, I will catch you in the next video. Cheers for now.